Instead of how-tos, I'm calling videos like these how did eyes. I'm doing so for two reasons. The first is just to be difficult, and the second is that I don't consider myself an expert on any of these subjects, so I want to encourage discussion on what I could have done differently or better. Hopefully these can help someone overall, or possibly help me improve my own techniques, so feel free to leave feedback. Recently, the Digital Lethargia BBS went live. Since I have separated out the database, web server, and app server portions of Digital Lethargia into Docker containers, I wanted to do the same for the BBS. This helps keep things modular, easily updated with change control, and somewhat sandbox. Plus, with Telnet being a somewhat insecure protocol, I like the idea of it going to a container rather than directly to the host itself. I chose Synchronet as the BBS system to use because it is still actively maintained, has a good community, and has good management tools. This video assumes a small level experience with building packages and using Docker. The first thing I needed to do was get my system ready to build and test the Synchronet system. I am currently using an Ubuntu 20.04 system, so these steps may differ depending on your distribution. The Synchronet wiki lists the needed prerequisites for Linux systems, which I will provide the link below. Personally, I was missing the Ncurses dev library and the Netscape portable runtime library, so I had to install them using the apt command, as you can see here. Since I planned to be running some old DOS doors with the BBS, I was going to need DOS EMU to run them. There didn't seem to be a package for DOS EMU in the official Ubuntu repositories, so I ended up finding a package built for 19.10 on Launchpad and installing that using apt, which still seemed to work fine. Now that I had the prerequisites installed, I was able to proceed to building the package from source. Luckily, the Synchronet wiki has very good instructions for this and a wonderful makefile that even handles the code checkout for you. So generally, all you need to do is obtain the makefile and build. I obtained the makefile using the wget command, and I built the package using the make command. Note that if you're just building Synchronet to run outside of a container, I would suggest following the instructions and use the symlink flag as that will make subsequent updates and upgrades to the system easier in the future. Since I will be rebuilding the container for updates, I chose not to use a symlink flag, and also used the use DOS emu flag, as I will be using DOS stores for this setup. I got a number of warnings during the build, but luckily no errors. At this point, I ran a quick test to see if the sconfig utility would load to ensure the build worked. A reminder that by default, Synchronet looks for its config files under the slash sbbs slash control folder. So you'll need to add the sbbs control environment variable if you're not using that path. I already had a Docker environment set up on my machine, so I won't go into that here. I'm still somewhat of a beginner on the Docker side of things, so I'm sure there are some ways I can improve this. I started by creating a Docker folder in my SBBS folder. I also created folders and moved in needed items like the DOS EMU package and the termcap file to make things easier. Within that Docker folder, I created a Docker file, which you can think of as a make file for Docker containers. It tells Docker all the information and pieces it needs to build a container. Let's go through the Docker file I created. The from line tells Docker which base image to start from and generally needs to be the first line. Since I used Ubuntu 20.04 to build the system, I chose that as my base image. The label line defines a description for the container. The expose line defines the ports that the container will be listening on. These can be and generally are remapped and redefined at runtime, but should still be included here. Following are a series of run and copy commands. These are fairly self-explanatory 
I either run a command within the container or copy items into it. I am doing the following set of steps in my Docker file. First, I create the slash SBBS folder. Second, I copy the SBBS folder structure from my dev directory into that root. Third, I copy the dosemu dev package into the temp folder, and I also copy the ancbbs termcat file into the temp folder. Next, I run the app update command to populate the list of available packages from the Ubuntu repository. After that, I install the needed packages. Note that these are the binary versions of the dev prerequisites I installed before building. Next, I install the dosemu deb package. And after that, I remove the package list files to save space now that everything is installed. I make sure everything in the sbbs slash exec folder is ex executable. I can probably narrow this down to specific files, but for now, we'll just make everything executable. I then compile the ncbbs termcap info file, and I copy my modified dosemu config file over the default. After that, I update a couple environment variables within the container so that the executables can locate the needed libraries in the SBBS folder, and I ensure the lang variable is set to English US. The workdir line defines the working folder that the container will start at in runtime. In this case, the exec folder of SBBS. And the entry point defines the command that will be executed when the container starts, in this case, the SBBS server executable. Once I had everything to find, I built it with the docker build command. I use the minus T argument to tag the container, and my naming convention is generally my repository name, followed by the service, then the date and the build number. The minus F argument to specify which docker file to use, and finally, the required context argument as just a dot to specify the current directory. The command will then download the base image you specified in the from line, apply all the changes commands you specified in the rest of the Docker file, and package it up as a new container image. To test the container, I first ran it attached in the foreground to see all the output with the docker run command, using the name argument to name the container, followed by the tag of the container image to run. At this point, I saw the familiar Synchronet output and things were looking good, so time to test it out. Because of the way I started the container, it will only be accessible from the local machine, which is fine for initial testing. To do so, I needed to find out what IP address Docker gave the container within its internal range, so I used the docker inspect command and looked for the IP address line in the output. With that information, I was able to load up SyncTerm and connect to the BBS using Telnet. The nice thing about Synchronet is that you can run the sconfig utility right from within a session to the BBS, but there may be situations where you need to be able to run that command or others from within the container. To do so, you use the docker exec command to execute a bash shell within the container in interactive mode using a sudo terminal, which is the minus i and minus t arguments. That'll give you a prompt to run everything you need to and redirect the standard in and outputs to your terminal. At this point, I had a container image that I can deploy a default Synchronet setup from at any time. Once deployed, I can connect to it and configure it. The next issue I needed to solve was the fact that all the data and config are stored within the container itself, so that any time I redeployed or updated the container, all that info would be wiped out. Luckily, Docker also allows you to map folders within your container to folders on your host with the minus V option even if they already exist within the container itself, the host map will take precedent. Note that you have to copy the contents of these folders from your initial build folder to the host folders for the first time. 
To allow external access, you can tell Docker to map an exposed port on the container to a port on the host. And finally, you can tell Docker to run the container detached using the minus D option so that it keeps running in the background. As you can see from my Docker run command, similar to the one I'm using on my prod host. Note that I also mapped the entire extern folder to my host, which means I don't have to copy any updates done to the external folder from the repo when upgrading the system as well. A better practice might be to have a separate folder for any doors that you wish to add to your system from the base install. And that is basically it. I can now delete and redeploy the container, and as long as I keep the same mapped folders, my config and data will persist. Some other useful Docker commands to keep in mind are the docker run, docker stop to start and stop your containers, the docker ps to list running containers, and the docker rm to remove containers you have deployed. And that is how I built and containerized Synchronet BBS. Feel free to leave feedback to let me know what I could have done better. And as always, thank you very much for watching.